Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another video here on Glass Hand. And today we are going to look at something a little bit different and something that is different but is also very important and that is render management. And for a long time I have neglected this and I've just kind of used the built-in tools in any DCC to network share or uh, connect to a NAS or server and use multiple hardware and multiple workstations to render out jobs. So this actually came about when I was talking to a good friend of mine, Simon Holmetal, and we were talking about pipeline and workflow, and I had asked him a couple questions about what he had used in the past, and he recommended Deadline, uh, something that they use a lot. And once I started diving into it, I saw exactly how powerful it is and why you should actually use this in your day-to-day. -day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. So right here, this is the deadline setup, and it looks kind of intimidating at first, but you can see that I have two jobs that are queued up, one from Cinema 4D and one from Redshift, and uh, you can actually see the tasks here on this top right-hand side. So these are all the frames. You can see the frame count. Uh, you, you can actually get a visual representation of how everything is going by these nice little pie charts on every single window which is really cool because you can kind of see an overview of your entire project and its progress. So here in the bottom right you can see all of my slaves and uh, on the bottom left we'll probably go into another video about this and this is what's really powerful for me uh, being a small studio being able to scale up is using Amazon's web services to actually render out your jobs and um, like I said this will be a whole nother video uh, because it's something kind of unrelated to network rendering. So let's go ahead and check out how we can kick over these jobs. So this is a demo scene that I was working on to kind of do some cool data visualization, kind of some Gmunk uh, inspired uh, wires. And basically what it is is just a bunch of effectors um, that are working on these systems that are cloned out, uh, these actual splines. And then um, I have a XParticle setup that is fully cached that is kind of doing this... Um, this broken data kind of animation that stems out from the center and goes out to the outer limits of this circle here. And we'll see what this looks like in a moment. But um, I'll go ahead and put this scene online for you guys to check out if you want to see how it's made and break it down step by step. We won't have time to look at that today because we're just going to be talking about rendering. So if we go ahead and open Redshift and we're going to go to our render view, we'll go ahead and load that into our IPR just to kind of take a look at what this looks like and we'll fit this to the window. So it's just kind of this style, um, very simple, kind of one light coming in. We got some volumetrics. So nothing uh, terribly complicated here. And if we go into our Redshift settings, I'll just show you um, kind of the unified sampling. Um, and it renders very fast. These sampling overrides are probably uh, a little too generous for what we're actually rendering here. And no GI. So something very simple. And also, um, I do have some AOVs that we can um, actually look and use and render out later on. And then my output path is just uh, pointing to my NAS, uh, my job repository, and my images folder. So um, what you can do is come down to submit to deadline. Once this comes up, you can actually do just a submission uh, through Cinema 4D, or you could actually do an, a Redshift kind of export. Um, so this is really nice. I believe you can also do Arnold if you have this installed. Uh, so you can submit uh, just a simple Redshift or Arnold file instead of submitting a Cinema 4D file. So this works great, just doing it simple Cinema 4D. Uh, you set your frame and you basically go ahead and hit submit and you're off and running and it will actually have it on deadline. Uh, what I would like to do is just kind of show you another alternative and this is something that will work specifically with AWS. So if I come down to export and I do a Redshift proxy, we can export a frame range um, which I'll go ahead, let me just run through those steps so you can see what it looks like. Uh, so Redshift Proxy, go ahead and say where you want to save it. So I, I believe I actually submitted this into our Red Farm, or uh, sorry, Render Farm repository, uh, jobs, and then the standalone test here. So you can see I just named it something simple. Uh, let's just, for example, sake, go ahead and name it something else. So these .rs files are actually Redshift standalone files and they can be opened in any DCC that it has a Redshift um, plugin with it. So it's really cool. Um, it's great to work in a pipeline with and um, I went ahead and saved this out with a frame range. What that will do is 
create um, a lot of different Redshift files here. So you can see 0 to 68. So once we come over to Deadline, we can come over to Submit, and we can take a look at all the applications that Deadline integrates with. So there are a lot here, and if you're not a Cinema 4D or Redshift user, there are a ton of different softwares here that you can incorporate into your pipeline. So um, what we want to do is just create a Redshift job. Uh, we can name it whatever we want. Um, I like that you can add comments. Um, sometimes here, I'll uh, just type what the resolution is. So we'll just say like 1080 res. And then you can choose what department it's from, who submitted it, and um, then you can set the priorities here. And then you can come over to the Redshift options, and the Redshift file, once you point it to a sequence, it will automatically be able to calculate uh, how many is in that folder, which is great. And then you can submit an output directory. So uh, once you do that, it will go ahead and it will queue up here, and you'll see the Redshift icon. And uh, this is extremely fast to, to read and um, render out to. So if you come over here, you can see the, uh, the total clock time. So if you right click, you can actually do things like notify me when complete. So you can set your email address and it can let you know what's, when it's done. Um, and you have just full control. You can look at the job reports. Uh, you can look at the history, the output. And this is just nice too. So once we have this directory up, I just went ahead and threw that into Fusion and you can go ahead and watch this back. So that's kind of the overview of how it works. So let's kind of talk about how you can uh, do the installation and a little more details about Deadline. So what you're going to have to do is when you download Deadline, we'll just go to my desktop real quick. When you download Deadline, uh, which by the way, it's free up to two slaves. So you're going to get um, these downloads once you go to their website. Um, this first one is the AWS portal link. Uh, this is something you're going to want to uh, follow the instructions heavily on. Um, and like I said, we'll make another video about the AWS portal because it's really awesome. Um, but we also have the Deadline repository and then we have the Deadline client. So the repository uh, is going to be two different installations. It's going to be one, the repository where all your jobs and the communication between the jobs and the plugins are going to happen. And then you have a database, which is a Mongo database that is going to connect all of your network computers together, and that's how they're going to communicate. Uh, for me, this is a little interesting because the way I have it set up is I have a Mac Pro that is running the database, and then um, I'm pointing the Mac Pro during that installation to a repository drive. So let's go ahead and kind of look at what that looks like on the Mac Pro. Okay, so let's kind of step through the uh, installer on the Mac. So um, this works, Deadline works great with Linux, Windows, and OS X. I'm super impressed by how easy this is. And the steps are virtually the same throughout any of the installers. So um, don't be uh, thinking that this won't work for you because it will totally work if it's a Windows um, or Linux uh, studio. So let's go ahead and just run the repository setup. So after a few minutes, you'll be greeted with this uh, installation dialog. So you'll want to read this and go ahead and accept, accept, and then this is your repository directory. So um, like I said, for me, uh, I have a NAS storage unit, so I'm going to point that to our repository and go ahead and hit choose. And uh, you want to make sure this has full read and write access because all of the computers on your network are going to be looking at this repository. And like I said, this is where the jobs, uh, the plugins, and everything lives um, is in the repository. And um, you want to actually, if you don't have a Mongo database, you want to go ahead and install this. And this is going to make sure that um, all the clients, everything is communicating well. Okay, so once you go ahead and do that, you're going to want to come uh, to each computer and go ahead and install the deadline client. And uh, we'll just go ahead and step through this. You want to go ahead and read and accept. And then the installation uh, directory, this is all good. And if you're going to be using AWS, you want to go ahead and uh, check this box here. This will come in later um, once you kind of decide if you need to scale up with your render farm. And then we're going to go ahead and say repository. Again, look at the... Uh, the drive here. And this is important that all the slaves uh, see this as the same um, path. 
you need it to be Z and then render farm repository on all of your um, machines. If not, um, for me it's going to be easy because they're all Windows slaves um, looking at a Mac database. If you have mixed uh, OS's and different machines here this could be a little more complicated and you probably want to look into universal naming conventions to make sure that everything is going to work out well here. So here is the certificates and for me I don't have a password protected certificate because I know uh, my network's secure and nothing outside of the network is going to be able to get in so uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for me to know that the clients uh, won't have a necessary roadblock to jump over and get into the database. So you can go ahead and do that if you like. Um, if you're just trying it out for free, go ahead and do the license free. Uh, for me, I do have a standard license, and that's going to be $48 a year for each, uh, for each uh, slave. So every client is going to have to have a license, and that is super easy to set up and run. And like I said, $48 a year is nothing for what this power and flexibility is going to give you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that, and you'll be able to run through that. And uh, like I said, look at the documentation if you have any questions because it's really thorough. So the next thing you're going to want to have to run is a license server. To get the license server, you just have to go to the ThinkBox software downloads, which you can go ahead and just Google. You'll land at this page. Go ahead and log in with your Amazon account. Once you're in here, you're able to download the license server. And this is where you'll also get the latest version of Deadline. And then you'll want to do the Windows installer EXE. So now you'll just run the license server setup and you'll go C of course is fine and then this is the license that you're going to get from Thinkbox once you purchase um, the licenses so you have to contact the support and you have to tell them how many licenses you want they'll send you a quote uh, the communication's great they're really fast really responsive and then once you get a PayPal link you'll purchase the licenses they'll send you back this license um, file this .lic so then you'll point your license server to this license. Okay, and then you'll just run through the steps here and it's, it's very simple and you'll have a license server running in the background. So then let's say you have everything set up to this point and you're on another computer and this is a different client. So this is, would be client number three uh, because you have just purchased your licenses. You would go through the standard client setup and you would arrive at this dialog where it's saying uh, you want to point it back to the server which you installed your um, your licenses so for that it's my main workstation so all you have to type is at fin uh, you know in my case it would be whatever your computer name is or whatever the IP address of that computer would be so then at that point um, you'll you'll pretty much be at this junction here where you'll have all of your clients running uh, this this deadline monitor comes in the uh, client installation so anyone working on any workstation could run a monitor and monitor the jobs uh, and this is where you can do a lot of submittal processes as you've seen here um, and this is where you're gonna just be doing uh, things like say one one frame doesn't complete properly then you can requeue that one task or you can requeue all the tasks by that computer there's so much here um, that you know we could go into a whole nother video just dealing with the monitor and monitoring the actual rendering process. So one more thing I want to show you before I let you go and that's where all the plugins live. So all those really cool submittal plugins they're going to be in your repository. So here in the repository you have just a folder that says plugins and this is for all the different uh, DCC's and different apps that you have that's going to be able to integrate with Deadline you also have uh, in some cases you'll do you'll use these scripts um, to help you and I believe there is under submission there is some other things here so let's look at the Cinema 4D and you'll just want to go ahead and you can run this installer or you can do what I did and just put this into your plugins folder so notice this is .pyp that goes straight into your current version of Cinema 4D under plugins and there you go deadline c4d client.pyp so um, those steps are all documented on their website of course gonna leave all the links in the description below so check those out and uh, it's gonna be a little bit different depending on if you're doing it with Maya of course and Cinema 4D and Houdini they have great documentation to help you out 
So another thing you can do is come to submit and not only Redshift but you can use Octane and we'll probably look at this in another video and we'll also have more Octane updates with 3.08 and Octane 4 but this looks really really handy as well. So stay tuned for this upcoming video. Okay, so that will do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for following along. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to get to those ASAP. Uh, I'm not an IT specialist, so some of these networking problems, I'm afraid you'll probably have to tackle on your own. It's one of those situations where you just have to know the network and you have to know the hardware well enough and what the actual installation in your office looks like or in your studio. So thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.